Greetings. I'm uh, doing a little bit of catching up today on a Monday and I thought I would um, bring you along because if you're interested in sort of a follow-up on what I've done in the past. Um, you might recall, first of all, let me see, um, let me do these first. In June, <laughs> I, have a, I have it marked here on my jar in this orange and in the blue and orange jars. Both of them, I have them marked <laughs> on the front in my handy dandy painter's tape, which I use for everything. Um, Nasturtium tincture 616. So on June 16th, I um, made this. I think I might have made it in front of you. I'm not sure if I did or not. But to um, catch you up, those of you who did not, did not see the video, let me move this out of the way for right now. I took um, nasturtium leaves, and I talk about nasturtiums quite often here because I, I use them for everything. They grow wild in my garden, and they are in bloom in the cooler, in the cooler months of the year, not in the heat of the summer. But when they're cool and when they're growing, I use the flowers for things, and and I use the leaves for things, and we eat them and we use them medicinally, and. Um, this is one of my favorite ways to use the leaves. What I do with the leaves is I bring the leaves in fresh and I will dry some in my dehydrator or just let them dry. They will dry pretty quickly if you just put them out on trays, but I always do, I do it in my dehydrator. And when they're really, really dry, I store them in like a quart jar, a small, like a quart size jar, like you would get a mayonnaise jar. <laughs> um, and um, I, I store them that way indefinitely. They're good for a really long time. Dry herbs like that, as long as they're good and dry before you put them in storage, will last really a long time. And then every year, um, getting ready to go into the cooler winter months, I, I um, make a nasturtium tincture. That's one of the things I do with the leaves. So I will take the dry leaves, and when I did these, these are big. These are, um, what are these? Um, I think these will hold um, a gal, uh, yeah. No, this is a quart, what is this? Two pints, two pints is a quart. These are two quarts. Two quarts. This is like twice the size, okay. This holds two quarts and half gallon, half gallon jar. And um, I filled this pretty much Oh, at least halfway full with the dried leaves, maybe a little bit more. Sort of push them down in there, and then I just topped it off. I will use one of two things, vodka, or in this case, I used um, uh, spice rum. I use the spice rum because um, I make this. One of the things I do with the tinctures, I give it to my daughter, who uses it to when she gets sinus infections. She has a big problem with sinus infections and she, her doctor was turning her into a antibiotic mess. He was, she was being prescribed antibiotics constantly, which is never a good thing. So she has found that this offers her a lot of relief. So she uses them for that. We use them for things like, if you have a little bit of a cold, you wanna knock out something, you know, just something, you know, a little bit, or a little bit of infection. I use these when I, I also take this tincture when I feel like um, I might be getting a urinary tract infection. That's something that I sometimes get. I'm a little prone to that. So, um, a bladder infection, a bladder infection. So I will if take some of that to wipe that out. I don't use this for serious um, flu or those kind of symptoms. I would use um, fire cider for something like that, which I've showed you how to make too. But nasturtium, this will work in a tink in a in a pinch. Tinctures are wonderful. And they last pretty much indefinitely on the shelf, especially if you keep them in a cool, uh, cool rather dark location. Ideally, they would be in a dark bottle, but I kind of use what I have, and today I don't have dark bottles, so we're not going to use that. But anyway, this has been brewing, so to speak, steeping, if you will, these leaves in this spiced rum, or vodka, this is spiced rum, since June, and now we're into November. So, um... You know, we're almost five months later. 
So this is really ready to go. Sometimes I keep it as long as I want, but I want it off the, off the counter because I want this is behind me is my brewing station, and I use I have some other projects that I want to go back there. So I'm getting ready to um, I want to bottle this. So in order for me to bottle it, I'm going to and this I have done nothing to. You know, in the beginning I kind of I gave it a couple shakes here and then and again, but most of the time, oh, it's just been sitting. You know, it smells lovely. <laughs> this Trishan has a lovely kind of a. Um, it tastes like you know maybe a grass or a leaf I don't know but in a pleasant way it's not a it's not it's not horrible I just have here a big Pyrex because of the quantity I have a wire mesh trainer I'm going to put a um, I just don't know how my clean floor up it is um, like a uh, like a flower sack or a cotton towel that I'm just going to put line that because I want to catch every little bit I can of the, I don't want the leaves to go through. Um, the leaves are not going to hurt me, but it's just not that pleasant. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to pour through. First, I'm going to get a wooden spoon out from behind me. I'm just going to pour it through here and I uh, hope it'll catch it underneath. Hope we can do this without making a mess. So I'm going to just pour it rather quickly. Hoping to catch, get all the bits out of it. And I'm just going to do one at a time. Put the jar aside for later. Put that there. And I'm just going to catch all of my tincture underneath. Um, I make tinctures of all kinds, you know, I make a lot of different kinds of tinctures, but nasturtium tincture is one that we use most often, um, and it's, it's one that I share. I don't share all of my tinctures, but nasturtium I will share. I'm just going to give this a little bit of a squeeze, get the liquid out. And again, my hands are clean, but this is alcohol, so this is really... Um, it's pretty good stuff. <laughs> Nothing gonna, nobody's gonna hurt that. All right. And then I have another towel just for my hands. And then I'm going to just bottle it. In this case, I, that's it. It's so easy. This is like the easiest thing. Why you don't make it, I don't know. But anyway, um, I just have some of these. For this, I'm, this is not dark glass, but I'm going to keep it in a dark cupboard. And dark cupboard, which is very cool. This had, I think, oh, we love these little bottles. We don't buy this a lot, but for some reason I had this and it's bourbon. I think it's a bourbon bottle that came from Trader Joe's, but I love the shape of it. I'm really into, you know, bottles and jars, who isn't? And um, has a little screw cap, which is handy. And I just need to put a funnel and bottle it. Now, I don't know if you have Pyrex or not. Pyrex used to be the greatest thing. Pyrex, for some reason, these Pyrex, the spout is screwed and they don't pour. And the only one that pours is the small size, the two cup size. But the other ones, I have a one quart and a two quart. And oh my goodness, it goes everywhere. So I'm going to ladle. It takes me a little longer, but I'm going to ladle into... No, I'm not. I'm going to ladle into something else. And then pour it into the bottle. And I'll show you something I have that is really cool. I'll be right back. I got the whole set for you because I wanted to show you these. I got the link for these off of another channel that I was watching here on YouTube. I don't remember whose. Maybe a Homesteader channel. But this little set, if I can find the link to it, I will I will share it. But these are silicone. And they and they replace these. <laughs> here's a, here's a, a one quart. And here's a one pint. And here's the one cup. It comes as a set. But what I like about these the most is you. it has a beautiful measurement. It has both cups and ounces. And on the other side, it has liters and milliliters. But look, it's flexible. So it acts as a pitcher as well as a measure, but a pitcher that you can count on. So I'm going to just ladle into here. I've used a big one. 
so that you can see. Now this will pour eventually when I get down closer to um, the bottom, but right now I'm going to just go everywhere. If I try, I'll have a real mess. But I want to show you how slick this is. Because I can bend it, I'm even doing it with my left hand. Look how nicely that pours. Can you see that? Now, my biggest problem is I really fall in love with these bottles and I tend to hoard bottles. I hoard bottles and I kind of hoard jars, which is maybe not a good thing, but... <laughs> Somebody said that's crow energy when you save jars and things just so you can keep stuff in them, even though you have lots of other ones. I can't get rid of it. It's a really good jar. Okay, so I'm just going to fill this one as much as I can get in them. You know, light and air is an enemy to your tincture. Like I said, it'll last a long time as long as you are careful in how you store them. And you know, it's simple ingredients, but it's expensive because you're using alcohol, which is not even the, the, the least, you know, the, it, I don't use the best alcohol, but you're gonna drink it. I mean, you're gonna taste it. You don't want something that tastes horrible. So anyway, that's it. Um, I just want to show you, that's all I do, and I take my bottle and make sure the outside is clean, and then I put the cap on it, and I'm going to label this very well. It's very important. I do have one bottle of tincture in my cupboard that I found that is not labeled. I believe I know what it is, but it's one of the worst ones that I should not have, that I have left it not labeled because it is something that's fine for me to take, but it is something which would be very hazardous for my husband to take because it is something that, um, it's a, it acts as a little bit of a blood thinner. It's not a blood thinner, but it acts a little bit for people who have that issue, um, that it will maybe thin your blood a little bit. My husband is a bleeder. Boy, he bleeds like anything. Just naturally, it's not from his medication, it's from, I don't know what. <laughs> but, um, so he has to be very careful what he what he takes. So it's definitely not for him. So anyway, I'm just going to continue with these nasturtium. I'm going to empty this one, and then I'm going to fill up another one. Hope I don't run out of bottles. And these are going to be stored in my cupboard. And again, I'm going to, and you know, I know, these, some people can define these as, being almost crispy, the leaves that are left over in your jar. Mine are not crispy. They don't feel crispy. I, they could have gone longer, but realistically, I did not need them to go longer. But in the past, I have let them go oh, a lot longer than they went this time. So if you have the room, it just makes it maybe a little more potent. It doesn't, um, it doesn't get any better or not. It certainly has its potency in the beginning. And now, I think I've mentioned to you before, but just in case you did not see my other videos, the trick about using dried versus fresh leaves when you make your tincture, that is rather important because if you use a fresh, you know, think about a fresh leaf versus a dried leaf. A fresh leaf, one leaf, one thing it has that it dried this on is moisture. And if you use fresh leaves in your tincture, which you can, a lot of people go, oh, if you use really nice and fresh leaves, that's gonna be a really great tincture. But what happens is the alcohol is what it, which draws, acts to draw the nutrients from the leaf. The first thing that has to come out of the leaf, a fresh leaf, is the moisture. So the alcohol is going to be drawing water out of the leaf, the moisture out of the leaf, as well as the nutrients in the leaf, and the moisture that it draws out of the leaf is going to dilute the tincture. So if you want a really good, nice, potent tincture, I recommend that you use dry to take that, do that extra step and dry your leaves first. And also, it also buys you time. So first thing is, it gives you maybe better quality of product. Secondly, it buys you time. Once my leaves are dried, 
completely dried and stored properly in a jar, in a cupboard somewhere. They're there for all times. I mean, I think I still probably have some dried leaves in the cupboard that I didn't need for the tincture. I made these two because that's how much I wanted to make at a time. And um, But the rest of the leaves, just they just stayed in the cupboard. And I can use them for other things, or I can use them for more tinctures in the future. OK, so again, I'm just pouring this out of my silicone picture, picture. <laughs> It just works so well. I just love it. This would be a great Christmas gift if you know somebody who is, um, somebody who brews or makes tinctures or vinegars or, because you're always having to floor out from one thing into another thing. That's kind of what we do. And there we go. A nice full bottle. <laughs> It's very satisfying, you know, when you have a, I'm going to use this towel, when you have a, um, it's very satisfying when you're finished with something like this. You know, I mean, you're probably relieved too, but those of you who've been watching me, have been watching these jars sit on my counter behind me for, since June. You'd probably be happy to see something new in the future coming up behind me on the table. I'm not a doctor or anything. I'm not licensed in any way, so I'm gonna tell you I would never prescribe something like this to you, but when I would take it, I tend to take, it like I take a shot. <laughs> you know, just a, when I said an ounce or half ounce or an ounce. Um, at a time, a couple of times a day. is all maybe for a process of maybe three days or, uh, three or four days and then take take a break. Don't do it every day. When you take tinctures, you don't want to do it every day. I just have a little tiny bit in the bottom. I need that. Because I don't know, there's a reason why, but I don't even know why. But anyway, um, it just, it just has a better effect if you do it you know, take every few days, and then if you have to repeat it and do it again, you can do that. But everything, even the tincture, tincture like a wellness tincture, something for, to, um, I take not to get rid of something, but to, and, you know, for health purposes. Um, take it for a couple weeks and then stop it for a week or so, and then start it up again. It's kind of important to do that. All right. So, I'm going to clean up my mess, and then when we come back, I'm going to show you how, what I'm going to do over here with this. <laughs> okay, my nasturtium tincture is all bottled. It is labeled. I don't know if you can see behind me or not. Um, maybe you can. Um, the, the bottle's on the cupboard. I'm going to, after I'm done shooting, I'm going to find a place in my nice dark um, tincture covered for them by one more task than we're working on today and that is my vinegars now these vinegars i'm assuming they're done they have stopped bubbling there's a there's a um chance that they're not finished yet it um i have my ph strips if you've seen me do this before i have some ph strips here that i want to test to see the um acidic nature of the vinegar um and then we'll see what to do with that. We can restart it. We can, re, we can re bring it back to life. It's been kind of neglected the last week or two. I'm sitting on the counter. I have not seen anything happen, so we're going to see what happens. Um, to recap what I have in here, I believe this is <laughs> do as I say, not as I do, because in these, I did not mark them. And the reason I did not mark them is because I had first two, and the, the first two I did, I think, I was just doing one kind of, just doing apple for apple cider vinegar and um, one of them I was doing a barley cake in um, September. I was experimenting with an apple barley cake and some of that's from that. And then um, I was doing some spirit dolls. When I did my spirit dolls, I had Granny Smith apples. I did some of that. And then, but what happened is I did a 
Hmm. I want to see. I think I did pear. I think the third one is pear, actually pear, because I made some pear jam. And I think I used the peels and pits from the and the cores from the pear from the pears to make this. So we'll test that and see. We'll see what it is. But anyway, I should have used my tape. I should use my handy dandy tape. Um, because it is so easy to forget what you've done and you have a lot of things going on. So first things first is I know these two are apple. I'm pretty sure these are apple, so I'm going to just take this and I'm going to look at it. I can, I can already see there's a little scummy bit of scum and stuff on the top. Not actual mold, but kind of scummy, not really attractive stuff, which will come off with the apples when I dump the apples. Um, according to everybody that I that I would consider to be an expert in the subject, a little bit of mold is not going to hurt anything because the vinegar is going to take care of that. It's, it's, it's very nature. So we're not going to worry about mold, but usually there's nothing that looks too alarming. Um, this doesn't look alarming at all. This just looks like something that's been sitting. So I'm going to take again, I'm going to take this and um, I'm going to put it into my um, I'm going to put it through my strainer and dump it into my strainer again into my into my cloth and then I'm going to get the I'm going to get the solids out of it then I'm going to check the um, the acidic because of the acidic level because I cannot this one I cannot do with the solids in it it's just too it's too close to the top so I'm just going to dump into here and it really should smell vinegary to me Let's see what happens the peels kind of change their um, the nature of the color um, A lot of peels. This one had a lot of peels. It also had more peels than I really needed to do. I don't usually have that much. But then I have to squeeze it out. I want to get every bit of liquid I can out of it. And usually I let it sit, you know, a little bit longer. Or I wring this out. I'm having a little difficulty with my hand. My hand is really sore, so it's going to be a little hard for me to wring it out. But we'll do our best. <laughs> now, I've mentioned to you before when I was making vinegars, you can make vinegars of anything. You can make um, vinegars of any kind of fruit. Or um, a lot of people use flowers, make floral vinegars out of herbs or... Uh, or, or petals of flowers. Um, it can be used for a lot of things. We use vinegar all the time for cleaning. We make our cleaning products out of mostly vinegar and water and a little tiny bit, usually use a little tiny bit of um, really gentle, earth-friendly um, dish soap. Just a little bit, but it's mostly vinegar and water. I use vinegar as a rinse on my hair, um, especially when my hair gets a little bit tangled because my hair is long. And um, to get tangles out, I use I use vinegar. I use vinegar sometimes. My scalp gets real dry sometimes, so I will use vinegar rinse on my hair. And like when I wash my hair, I'll rub vinegar into my hair real good and and into my scalp real good, and then I will shampoo as usual, rinse it out. Um, and of course, vinegar in cooking. We use cooking flavor for salad dressings or whatever. I use vinegar, of course, when I do pickling and preserving, but I, t I do not use my own vinegars. The safety issue involved, even though I pretty much trust my vinegar, um, I really have to trust the, you know, you know, the professionally pro uh, manufactured vinegars, um, like I use them. Um, 
apple cider vinegar with the mother. I use really good quality of that. So I can trust that, that the pH is exactly what it says it is all the time. It's stable, um, which sometimes, sometimes with my own vinegar, you don't have that stability. I'm just gonna plop that in front of me on that towel deal with this mess later because I want to get in here and check the pH of this. Now this is definitely apple. So it would be what we consider an apple cider vinegar. And it really smells like vinegar so I'm pretty confident in my pH. But what I have here are my pH strips. I just buy this little kit. They're available pretty much everywhere. And I get a strip out and then I just want to put it somewhere where I'm not going to get a mess. And um, um, I'm going to dip it into my um, dip it into my vinegar for just a minute. And dig it out and then see what happens. Okay, just so you can see the difference. This is before I dipped it. I don't think you can see it. And this is after I dipped it. Before and after. Two different colors. Can you see that? I don't know if you can or not. Because I can't even see what you can see. But anyway, um, then I compare it on the color chart here. And I'm looking for something between like two, actually between two and three, like around 2.5 is really good. And I have something that I would consider to be um, definitely 2.5, two, definitely 2.5. I match almost exactly 2.5. Which I think apple cider vinegar, when you buy apple cider vinegar is a 2.5. Okay, so that one is that one is pretty pretty excellent. Okay, I'm just gonna put that there for wait a second. Put that there. Okay, and then I'm gonna bottle and I, I keep my old this is from a Bragg's apple cider vinegar, I can tell, I think, one of them. Because we use that all the time and um, even you know, even my chickens, we put apple cider vinegar in my chickens my chicken water for them to um it helps keep them healthy. So, let me put this in here. I have a 2.5 on this pH on this apple cider vinegar. Okay. A 2.5 is like what apple cider vinegar usually is. Okay. I think I will even taste this and see what it tastes like. When they talk about vinegars, they talk about mothers, and I know people ask, "Well, is there a mother?" Well, if I if I can, I'm going to get a bottle out and show you some of my old apple cider vinegar because I let it left a mother in my jar in my bottle. Okay, so this is apple cider vinegar, and right now, before I do anything, I'm going to mark it. Because, huh, shame on me, ACV. Apple cider vinegar. See, that takes seconds. I don't know why I'm such a shortcut all the time. And now I want to try, since I think this is apple too, I'm going to go ahead and put this. This one, which I think I believe is apple as well. 
I'm going to go ahead and dump that. I'm going to get another towel through the same strainer. I don't have to rinse out my strainer. And this one was a little different because this one was mostly, this one, the apples here was from when I made my spirit dolls. So it's mostly peels, no cores. So it's what we would call an apple peel. No mold at all in there, but no activity. It smells very vinegary, so we're gonna go ahead and pour that in. Let's see what we get. I believe the first one had a little more, um, it was a little longer. It grew for a little bit longer than the second one. So let me see what happens. How strong it is. Now, what I might end up doing is mixing these together or mixing this in with another vinegar that I still have. I believe I still have some. Can't be sure. I certainly really make a mess. <laughs> but what do I kind of say? No mess, no blessing. You know, if you want to have if you want to have the blessing of the vinegar, you're going to make the mess. It's kind of the case with everything. Okay. So as we can already tell, this is a little bit lighter in color than that one. Let's see what this is. Let me get my other towel, dry my hands. And we're going to check the pH on this one. Remembering where we started with it. Oops. Where we're starting with this. It's kind of a blue gray at the top. I'm going to dip it in and see what happens when it turns. They turn rather quickly. And this one, I want to compare it to the one I did before, <laughs> to my first batch. They look pretty much identical. <laughs> if you can see, I don't know if you can see it or not, but they're pretty much identical in color. So that would give this one to be about a 2.5 as well. So before the first one did have the apple core and peel, this one just had the apple peels and I got the same result. Definitely a two five. Definitely a two five. So that's something good to know, right? You can have the peels, you can have the cores and peels. You could use the whole apple if you wanted to, but why would you? Because the whole re purpose of this is um, we're going to use. We're gonna. This is something we would normally throw away. We would put it into maybe the compost pile, which is not thrown away, and that's important to do that too. But Sometimes we have such a quantity, like when I did the spiritals, I had a dozen apples worth of peels, or when I did the, you know, you end up with a lot of, um, you end up with a, with a lot. So, put this in here. It's much different. Now remember this was also a Granny Smith apples. 
So it's a little greenish tinge to the vinegar. Rather than now, I'll put it side by side and let you see. I'm also going to have a little more than I had with that one. So I'm going to have to find another jar for that. For the rest of it. Whoops. I just don't know when to stop. So I'll put that, like that one, I think I need to take some of that out of there, a little bit too much. Okay. I don't want it to explode in my cup, I don't think it will, but just making sure. Okay, look at the difference in the colors between these two. Do you see the difference? One's more green and one's more peachy color. But they're both vinegars. They're going to both be delicious in a salad, good for my hair, good for cleaning. You know, it doesn't take much effort. It just takes a little tiny bit of time. And you're good. A little time and you're good. Okay, this I have to save. I'm gonna use one of these to save it. Because I have a third vinegar to do. We'll see what I need to do with that in a minute. Um, let me get this cleaned up and then I'm gonna come back and check the vinegar, the pear vinegar. I got a, I got my um, apple cider vinegar. This was apple cider. It says ACV 20. I made it 20. I should put 21 on mine so I can keep track. Um, but look at the difference in the color between this one and the ones I made today. It's not alarming to see different colors. There's different reasons to see different colors. First of all, um, this apple could have been a redder apple um, than these. But also, I don't know. The, I don't think you can see it on the video. But there's some cloudy, goopy, cloudy stuff at the bottom of this. Um, which is the mother, which is actually the mother. It's forming a mother sitting in that cupboard. And so that's really good to go. It's really, you know, it's still very healthy vinegar. Um, it doesn't have to have a mother to be healthy, but don't be alarmed if you see a vinegar, a mother fin furnished, um, uh, for me. It's, it's good, it's really healthy. Is, and you can just shake that up and use it. It's perfectly fine. We see that in the brags. If you buy brags or anything like that that you drink. Um, some of my vinegars get a solid, a solid gelatinous clump of mother. Um, which my chickens, if I rinse it off, I can give it to the chickens. I really love that. But anyway, um, the reason I got this out is because I have a little bit of this, the last left and I thought I'm just going to add it to this. It's vinegar, vinegar is vinegar, apple cider vinegar is apple cider vinegar and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to pour this, try to use my fancy pour thing, right, whoops, right into my bottle and then it's just, it's just, it's just apple cider vinegar. So it'll just be just as good, maybe better. That helped me with my that helped me with my problem about my bottles, and then I have then I have um, this remind this will remind me to add twenty one to these labels, and then I just wanted to show you I want to do the pear my pear vinegar I want to check the pH on that and do that but I want to show you a couple other bottles that we have we just save interesting bottles I think this one was I've used this for apple cider vinegar before. This actually was a wine vinegar bottle that I got, you know, commercial wine vinegar. It has a lovely, nice cap that fits on it. It's just a really nice, interesting bottle. So we keep something like this and we reuse them. <laughs> and 
then we have this, which I love. This has some kind of out liquor in it. I'm not sure what. Some kind of whiskey or something. Which I love the shape of this bottle. And I love this has a cork. A cork uh, lid. Which is wonderful. So I'm what my, my pear vinegar is going to go in one or both of those. If we check the pH and we like it. And this one. Um. It smells of vinegary, but not as strong. And I'm going to, since my solids are all down here, can you see that? Since my solids are down, I'm going to check my pH before I strain it because I might want to wake it up a little bit. We'll see. Okay, so here's my, here's my strip. So I'm going to stick it in here. And we're going to look and see what we get. Well, it's looking pretty promising. And I'm seeing again, <laughs> pretty much a 2.5, a 2.5. So, you know, they're all the same. They're all the same. Even after they dry, they're the same. Okay. So this is a good, good pear vinegar. Um, it's going to have a little ton of a different flavor than apple cider vinegar. This will be wonderful in a, like a pear vinaigrette or something like that. But also I'm going to experiment a little bit with in my hair rinses and, and things like that. But vinegar is vinegar. So these towels are pretty stained. I've used them so many times for so many things. But again, we're going to pour through and see what we get here. Mmm, smells so good. Vinegar is lovely. Such, so many wonderful properties of vinegar. Anyway, this is some experimentation that you can do for free. You know, it's not going to hurt anybody except that you would normally be disposing of. Um, so, I encourage you to give it a try. We put so many toxins, in, tox, toxins into our environment all the time. You know, and as witches, I think we have a responsibility to the earth. We're sort of given some, to be somewhat of caregivers to the earth. At least I feel that way as a... So I want to do my part as much as I can. And vinegar is a really good cleaner. You know, I have a, pers a professional cleaner who comes in and helps me. Once every, once every week or every other week or whatever. She helps clean us with our, some of our cleaning since we're, we have a pretty big deal going on here. Um, I'll, and we have given her our cleaner to use on certain things because like our piano and things, we don't want any toxic. She doesn't use anything toxic, but we gave her our cleaner to use. And I believe it's pretty much what she uses anyway. She uses like that. So many of the professional cleaners are even starting to use these um, these chemicals that they think so will not harm the, harm the earth. Environmentally safe chemicals. Vinegar, water, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of um, soap maybe. Just real gentle soap. But the soap's really not necessary unless you want, unless you want it as a degreaser or like a little bit of a suds, but I think the days are gone when we have to use these heavily scented perfume cleaners. You know, I can't even, I cannot even walk down the aisle um, in the, uh, I think I'll put it in here. I can't even walk down the aisle of the grocery store without, um, maybe I better put it in this big one. The, because where all the cleaners are, it's just so heavily scented to me. It's just, it's horrible to me. I have such a problem breathing in that aisle. So, this is going to be beautiful. Again, it's preferable if you use a dark glass, but I don't have dark glass right now, so this is what I'm using. So I'm just going to be careful. Keep it in a dark cover. Keep it out strong light. And, um, use it up. And so the next time you tune in, 
You're going to be seeing something different going on behind me on the table, hopefully. Anyway, I will try to edit this down. I know this has been a big, a big process. Um, but I'll edit it down. And I hope you learned something. Yeah, I think I'm going to have both of these bottles being used. So, huh, this just it does not do much for me to break the habit of keeping all these stupid bottles, does it? See, now that I'm down further, I can, I can pour. But in the beginning, it was just impossible to pour without making a mess. Okay. And there we are. And these will all say pear. I'll do that right now. So you will be my witness. Pear. And I'm going to say 21. See how this takes no time at all. That takes no time at all. I don't know why I don't do it. Here, no 21 for the next one. We think, oh, I know what that is. It's like you put something in the refrigerator and you think, oh, I know what that is. Two days later, you go, what the hell is this in my refrigerator? We all do that. Okay, so there's pure 21. These are apple cider vinegar. 21. 21. So I know to use the older ones first. But they're good, and that's 20. All right. And here we go. Well, that was nuts. <laughs> I forgot to plug in my camera and it was running on battery. Didn't know it and it shut off. That's okay. <laughs> I just came back to say goodbye. So, I um, hope you learned something. I'd love to know if you give um, either making tinctures or uh, brewing your own vinegars a try. Let me know. And um, until I see you again. Thank you for watching. I'm Rebecca. As always, I wish you blessings.